The Unshackled Waves, episode 153. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now for those who've been watching this show for uh, the, the past few episodes, you'll notice we've got the, the new studio uh, set up here with beautiful Melbourne in the background, but uh, uh, what we can also do with this new studio is have uh, in-studio guests now, and I'm delighted to introduce uh, next to me here in, in the new studio, YouTuber 8-Bit Thoughts. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, man. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so you're the, the first uh, in-studio guest, so... Um, it's... Hopefully I don't fuck it up for you. Yep. <laughs> well, it's a great experiment here, so yeah, we'll just see where it goes. Uh, now, uh, you were originally uh, from Brisbane, but you've moved yep. down here uh, to Melbourne uh, now, so are you enjoying our uh, progressive, multicultural, <laughs> uh, diverse city? Um, it's different. It's very different from what I'm used to. I don't think I realized how conservative Brisbane was. I mean, just the whole atmosphere is is much more, um, like, obviously very multicultural. Um, but there's sort of an attitude here that, like, progressivism is, is just normal and quite extreme progressivism as well. So, you know, in Brisbane, it was very, very normal for your average Joe Blow to be against social justice warriors and things like that. Whereas down here in Melbourne, people look at you a bit strange if you if you talk shit about feminism and things like that. So it's um it's a beautiful city, don't get me wrong. I love it down here. But um yeah, the culture is very, very different. Yeah, I love it here too. Uh, I know that uh, w uh, when I tell a lot of other guests on this show I'm based in Melbourne, they say, oh, poor you, with, <laughs> with Daniel Andrews as the premier, it's not that bad. Uh, uh, we're lucky that, um, or where I am, that it's it's quite a nice area of Melbourne, hasn't been infiltrated by uh, Apex or <laughs> has all these progressive people. I know when I, go, I have to go into the, the city to an area like Fitzroy, I shudder and go, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, St Kilda's pretty bad as well. Yeah, uh, but there's still nice pockets of Melbourne which haven't been ruined yet, but uh, this is this is my home. I'm going to stay and fight for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so what brought you from Brisbane to Melbourne? Um, mostly career and opportunity. Brisbane's um, quite small, and to move up um, and to grow my business in sort of what I do is a lot harder in Brisbane. So we've only, in Brisbane, we, our population's like only, what, two and a bit million? Whereas down here, population of 5.8 million people. So there's just a lot more opportunity here. And Melbourne's certainly uh, growing. Uh, that's part of another, another challenge we have, whether our governments yeah. are capable of keeping up with the infrastructure. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, traffic down here is fucking terrible. Absolutely shocking. Like, I mean, I, I was on the train going into the city the other day, um what was it, eight o'clock in the morning, and we're packed in like a can of sardines. I mean, I don't know how this, this city is meant to grow when there's just, the infrastructure doesn't look like it's made for this many people. Oh, tra uh, trains are horrible. I'm glad <laughs> I don't catch them uh, mu uh, much anymore. Uh, but it's, uh, we just had the, the state budget recently, and I, I would have thought, you know, infrastructure, 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 but there's more, you know, health and uh, education uh, f to, to fund the, the yeah. bloated bureaucracy. And it's like, it's pretty obvious what you need to do. Yeah. And you probably would have noticed uh, down here in Melbourne, we have, uh, uh, we're infamous for our, uh, oh, I wouldn't say loopy lefty, but I'd say feral uh, lefty. So you, yes. you, it's very difficult to hold a conservative event, uh, which doesn't attract uh, uh, left-wing protesters. I mean, uh, when Milo toured Australia, uh, <laughs> the Melbourne one descended into a riot. Yeah, did you attend that? No, I, I no, I didn't. But yeah, I, I heard it was pretty... Well, what made it bad was... Uh, that the the lefties that was next to a housing commission the event oh, and a lot of uh, Africans live there and so they knocked basically knocked on the door and said hey there's this racist giving a speech next door you guys should all go out and protest <laughs> against him what a 
a joke. What an absolute joke. I had a friend who was um, in Melbourne who did attend that. And um, the crowd that were protesting from what I saw in the photos are exactly what you would imagine. You know, like your purple hair, overweight, septum piercing feminists. Just, oh, they're, they're shocking. They drive me nuts. And um, they can't be reasoned with when they're in a group as well. I mean, <clears throat> with, with most people on the left, if you can get them one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation with them and show that you at least are willing to listen to their point of view, you can, you can have a civil conversation and you can sort of agree to disagree on certain things. But the second you get lefties in a group, they're, they're impossible to deal with. And with those protests, there is, I've learned, a lot of planning that, that goes into it. They, they plan for days a day and what their chance going to be, what their strategy is. If you basically ambush them like they try to do to you, they're, they're, they basically go to water. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when Neil Erickson uh, confronted them at the, the Marxism 2018 conference, uh, they all just took a vow of silence because they, they were probably unprepared for it. And so they, they knew they couldn't win. Yeah. Is that, um, was it Avi, uh, what's his last name? Avi Yemeni. Did he do a video on that? Was that him? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I think, yeah, Neil Erickson was the only Neil one Erickson. that, right. uh, that yeah, attended. Okay. Now, YouTube has changed uh, quite a bit since we, yes. we, we last yeah. spoke, which was, it was February uh, 2017, uh, episode 26. We're now past uh, episode uh, 150 here, so it's been a while. You've grown to over 5,000 subscribers now, so yeah. congratulations uh, with that. And also, I, I know you're, you're friends with uh, Independent Man, but he's... Yep. He's uh, gone. Yeah. So is there room for you to move in and be the alpha <laughs> anti-SJW Australian YouTuber? Um, maybe. Maybe. I, I think my biggest problem is um, life gets gets caught in the way. Like I, I have all of these videos that I, that I plan on doing, but, um, you know, with work, with business and all that sort of stuff, things get delayed and then it ends up being a month before I end up doing another video. And this is where um, Independent Man was so, so good at what he did. He was absolutely committed to it. I mean, he was pumping out basically a video every single day. Oh, yeah. I got notifications all, all the time from his channel. Yeah. I mean, he put a lot of work into that. I mean, for him, that was, that was a full-time job. And he absolutely deserved as many followers and all, all the money that he made from it. He was very, very good at what he did. But um, I, I don't want to speak for him. Um, but I gave him a phone call after he uh, made the announcement that he was leaving YouTube. And um, it sounds like the negativity was just quite draining. And, and I can absolutely relate to that, especially when I was making videos sort of this time last year at a um, fairly regular rate. It, it can quite easily feel like the world is falling apart and you can take, take the black pill, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I, I can see why he did it, but um, it's sad to see him go because he was very good at what he did. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. He was definitely, I think, the the premier uh, YouTuber mm. in, in Australia, and uh, I, I I can understand where he's where he's coming from, but uh, for me, the the mindset is just focus on the the, the battle that we're in. I'd, yeah. I I always think there's there's no point in 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 getting down you've got to you've got to keep fighting and there's there, there's also so much progress that uh, that that you see as well mm. i um <clears throat> one thing that frustrates me is um as mainstream as anti-social justice has become we haven't changed much as far as policy goes so you know if you type in wrecked feminist videos or wrecked social justice warrior videos on youtube there's videos with millions and millions of views and i think that movement really shifted the overton window quite a lot and i think that was a very very good thing um because now even your average joe blow knows that the wage gap is sort of an economic myth and things like that but as far as policy goes and what that means for how you can um how things are operated in companies you like if you look at s some of these banks for example their hiring policies are still sort of favoring women they're still trying to give basically re-education programs to privileged white males and all that sort of stuff it's still quite prevalent and i find that very frustrating i feel like with all of the progress that was made 
as far as the Overton window shifting went, that um that that would have some carry on effects within the corporate world and the education system and things like that. But so far, it doesn't seem like that's happened. So he's still got a lot of work to do. I'll give you an example of where I think we're making progress is that it's become mainstream to want to bring white South Africans to Australia, which yeah. would have been unthinkable a year ago. And it's it was originally just us and the alt media talking about it. But now uh, News Corp in Australia covered it. And now uh, Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton and a lot of the other uh, backbenchers have um, also uh, expressed support for, for bringing, bringing them here. And of course... Uh, it's there's two benefits to that is that we're helping you know people who are uh, facing persecution mm. and we're also triggering the left out of existence yeah. <laughs> peter dutton i think is the only person left in the liberal party who has a set of balls he's um <clears throat> i like the way that he he will stand up and um and he won't back down he w he's not like turnbull where turnbull will basically do whatever's popular i don't think he's Turnbull really stands for anything, whereas Peter Dutton does, and I, I respect that. Yeah, he, he's definitely, and yeah, he is talked about as a possible uh, future uh, prime minister, which, which is pleasing. And it's not just on this issue; it's that you know he he, he really gives it to the left over the uh, refugee asylum seeker issue, calling them Amani refugees. I've never seen uh, you know uh, so-called refugees who are so well dressed with all the latest technology. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's um, <clears throat> I I think he's a he's an overall good bloke. I think he would do very well um as far as um being leader of the Liberal Party, but I don't think it would be an easy battle to win. I think um, the Liberal Party's problem at the moment is they're focusing on what's popular as opposed to what their values are, and um, what they think is popular. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. When Corey Bernardi left the um, the Liberal Party back in, what was it, last year? Uh, yeah, beginning of 2017. Yeah, beginning of last year. I thought that would sort of be the start of a fracturing within the Liberal Party. I thought that, you know, your traditional conservative backbenchers would potentially separate away from the Liberal Party since they've shifted so far to the left. But um, I think I was a little bit over ambitious in that i oh, will go back to oh, sorry i've got this running sheet here, no, no, which, I, right. which i've got to stick to uh there's also been a lot of other changes in youtube alt media i remember when we last spoke it was uh rebel media and uh breitbart who yeah. were ruling supreme but uh rebel of course have lost a, a lot of their big talent in lauren southern faith goldie yeah. uh, gavin mcginnis uh, Tommy Robinson and of course uh, infamously Kaylin uh, Robertson and of course uh, Breitbart they lost Milo and uh, having Steve Bannon back uh, as executive chairman was a real uh, disaster for them but we've seen the rise of uh, CRTV they've got the big personalities yeah. in Gavin McGuinness and uh, Stephen Crowder and also uh, Daily Wire run by uh, Ben Shapiro yeah. I, I see their articles shared uh, everywhere it's amazing how it's changed has that helped you guys grow the fact that um, Rebel and Breitbart have sort of fallen over a bit um, I, 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 I wouldn't say so I mean what we're doing at the Unshackled is is quite uh, different where we like to think of ourselves a bit more edgy than yeah. th than what uh, uh, Breitbart and um, Rebel do. I mean, uh, just look at our awards. I mean, we have like <laughs> Cuck of the Year Award, Degenerate yeah. of the Year Award, <laughs> uh, Patriot of the Year. We we, we go in. Uh, Who's uh, in the running for Cuck of the Year? Uh, as the, the winner of the past two years has been Justin Trudeau. Yep. I mean, no one can go <laughs> uh, pa uh, past him. It's... Oh, he He's just a walking comic strip, really. He never ceases to amaze me in the ridiculousness that he does. Uh, it's uh, Canadians, they must be... They, they must be waking up. I, I, so. I would sincerely, sincerely hope so. He's, I mean, he's a drama teacher and it shows because everything he does is just such a goddamn performance. It's ridiculous. The ultimate survivor in alt media is, of course, uh, Alex Jones and InfoWars. Yes. <laughs> uh, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, his right-hand man, is still as popular as everyone on YouTube. I think it's just because 
uh, you know, Alex Jones, even though he's, you know, he's real, <laughs> be believes in almost every uh, conspiracy theory uh, there is. It's it's so entertaining. It, it is. And the funny thing is, some of the things he actually gets right. Mm. <laughs> are the gay frogs. Yeah, like the gay frogs. I mean, technically, he's right. But I, I, I really wish that Alex Jones was like my uncle. And you just take him to like a family Christmas and just get a couple beers into him and be like, so, Uncle Alex, what do you think of 9-11? I think that's what, <laughs> just watch you unravel. That's what Joe Rogan <laughs> yeah. did. Oh, that podcast was brilliant. Uh, and, and, and of course, it, it's... He does well with his InfoWars store as well. Let's yeah. buy the vitamins and supplements, the, the water filters. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's um he's great value. I love Alex Jones. And because there is such a, a vacuum between the, the, the politicians in Australia and what the the, the public are actually thinking, uh, that's why the, the Patriot movement has uh, gained such prominence uh, here because they're unafraid to... Say, uh, say what uh, everyone else, the the media and the politicians, aren't. So um, obviously uh, Blair Cottrell and the United Patriots Front. Probably last time we spoke, they were probably the the peak body. But yeah. um, because they were f based on Facebook, um, Facebook pulled the plug. That was that was the end of them. Mm. Um, so pretty much the the reigning group uh, now is the the true blue crew they they formed in melton in opposition to a mosque being built there they're what i'd call probably civic nationalists they yeah. they try to focus on you know we want australian values um liberal democracy and then of course there's uh neil erickson who's who's just the 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 provocateur yeah. uh, of great a great entertainment value and then of course uh rv yamini um uh he's uh, gained quite a following on facebook up to about 140,000 uh likes but it's mm. that there's the, the politicians they still have an allergic reaction to dealing with anyone who's a patriot well i think nationalism has a really bad pr problem at the moment and i don't know what the resolution is but it, it shouldn't be shocking to anyone that anyone will want to put australia first i mean you've got a like the saying the grass is always greener i mean you've got to you've got to water your own lawn and i think standing up for australians first it, it shouldn't be shocking at all um but unfortunately it is and i think that's probably because the left have this tactic of you're a nazi anytime that um they disagree with you um and i think a lot of people give in to that as well like they go oh no 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 look i'm not i'm not a nazi of course you're not a fucking nazi mm. no one's a nazi anymore um but yeah they i think uh, yeah i don't know how to solve the pr problem um but i think it's one that could best maybe be tackled with a good bit of leadership but um yeah i haven't thought too much into what that would look like yet yeah. The problem is these groups often rise and fall, and then there's internal uh, fighting, which, yeah. which which doesn't help. But it's uh, I contrast it with the, the social conservative movement in Australia. There's heaps of different groups, but they all still manage to uh, present a united front, and uh, the the politicians and the media still like to um, deal with them. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. It's I don't know how to sort of change this yeah um yeah neither do i i mean it might just be time i mean we've the left has sort of gone so far to the extreme that i think it's pushed a lot of people to the right i mean 10 years ago i would have been i would have been a lefty 100 percent. hate to admit it but i was um whereas you know this it, it's just got so ridiculous that you know people are being sort of quote unquote red pilled and i hate that term but um, people are definitely waking up to the ridiculous the ridiculousness that's going on um so it, yeah it may just be time oh well, and that's why uh, because there has been you know such this demonization of people who have a slightly right view that's why we've seen yeah. the the rise of the the alt-right now when we last spoke the term was kind of loose it, yeah it, but now alt-right definitely does mean uh white nationalist uh uh, and uh, some, you know, you can even, you know, accurately describe them as Nazis. Yeah, I, I think there's definitely an element of that in there somewhere. Um, yeah, the alt-right, it used to just be 
almost a slanderous term at one point. I mean, we still sort of hear that from people like the ABC saying, oh, it's alt-right trolls. Um, no, it's actually just people criticizing you. But yeah, there's, um, I think there's some, the alt-right have some interesting points of view. I don't think they're wrong on everything. I think there's some things like there should be nothing wrong with going with being white. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it's, it's amazing that we've gone so far down the rabbit hole that when, um, when poll or 4chan or whatever it was, you know, put out those posters that said it's okay to be white. And then the media went into a frenzy over it. I mean, that's insanity to me. There should be absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but here we are in the current year where, um, where it's a bad thing to be straight, white, and male. Uh, and uh, one of their, their catch cries is uh, white, white genocide, which is, well, we mentioned South Africa before. I mean, mm. that's why it's so, um, we're, we're right to be concerned about anti-white racism because we're seeing its end result now in uh, South Africa. Yeah. And I, I mean, if you look at Europe, for example, with the massive amounts of immigration that's coming from North Africa moving into Europe, and you look at the birth rates of, say, white people versus these North African immigrants, I mean, fast track a couple hundred years, I'm not sure there's going to be many white people left. Now, I'm sure some people will say that that's a good thing. Um, I don't, personally. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, fine to say we want to keep uh, this country uh, as is, and if it just so happens that means you know keeping it full of white people, then so uh, be it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, often uh, what we're describing there is you know we want to keep it the same, the, the the same culture, and I think there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now, uh, when we last spoke, we were all both on a bit of a high. It was a few months after uh, Donald Trump's election, and was there was the mass, mass, mass triggering. Oh, that was <laughs> that was so epic! Uh, but the the political establishments well and truly returned. Now, elections in Europe. Uh, Marine Le Pen lost to yeah. Emmanuel Macron, the the, the globalist. Uh, I, I'd say is probably the the new cuck leader. Yeah, oh, he's he's shocking. <laughs> and Angela Merkel got re-elected in. Uh, Germany. Uh, probably the only uh, silver lining was Sebastian Kurtz in Austria. He's been um, he, he's been quite a, uh, a solid uh, nationalist in a, in Australia. The elections that we saw uh, in uh, Western Australia, Labor Party won in Queensland. Uh, Labor, Labor Party won, yeah. uh, and um, obviously Trump's been been up against it, uh, not just from Democrats but people in his own party. Yeah, the deep state. It's, um, yeah, look, we, we've, we've got work to do. Um, we definitely have a battle ahead if we want to have a bit more conservative values, in, you know, sort of enforced in lack of a better word. But, um, I think Donald Trump was a good step forward. Um, but it's going to take a bit of time before the, I think the rest of the world catches up. I mean, one of the problems the United States has is a lot of people just want to see Donald Trump fail. And that's ridiculous to me. I mean, whether you like the guy or not, you should really want him to succeed for the sake of your own country. But um, yeah, I think more people are just are too high and mighty about it and just, you know, want to see him suffer so they can turn around and laugh at him. And I think that's ridiculous. I mean, the big test for Trump will be the, the midterms, which we're told either oh, Democrats will sweep the House and the Senate. But Trump is... Uh, objectively making good progress. I mm. mean, the economy is performing well. He's he, he's bringing jobs back to America. That, that was pretty much after he was elected, all these companies said, oh, we're not going to uh, proceed with our, with our offshoring. And, and of course, his uh, signature achievement is, uh, uh, it's, he, he's not there yet, but peace on the, on, the, on the Korean Peninsula. Yeah, what a time to be alive. I never thought I would see that in my lifetime. It's uh, absolutely fascinating to um to see that that war is finally ended. Uh, going back to uh, uh, Australia, and uh, it's well, we're basically stuck with uh, 
a left-wing party and a less uh, left-wing party. I mean, yeah. where we, we discussed, um, <laughs> and there's good people in the Liberal Party, such as uh, uh, Peter Dutton, but it's it's pretty much a, bi a business in, as usual. I mean, the, the Turnbull government's uh, response to, to Labour is that oh, we're just the more economically responsible. Uh, Turnbull is still, even two years after the election, repeating his jobs and growth slogan. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing that bloody term. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, they're not that much better economically. I mean, in the grand scheme of things. So what's the point? I mean... They're, they're so far away from actually being conservative that it's ridiculous. I, um, I really, really would like to see some people in, um, in the Liberal Party stand up for some actual values. But that, yeah, it's just not happening at the moment. Uh, and of course, the, the, the culture wars. I mean, the left has just gotten so much more... Uh, or I'd say uh, draconian or uh, just more demanding. I mean, uh, Australia Day now is pre pretty much the... Like the the past year, the, in the lead up to Australia, you saw all those uh, lo local councils uh, decide to remove all references to Australia. But in the in the run up, in the 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 last two weeks, it was uh, the the Greens had their it was it, Richard Di Natale was most important uh, policy outcome to to change the date uh, of Australia Day, and of course uh, the ABC were running or oh, is Australia Day offensive, and it was just uh, just insane. And uh, of course there uh, there was the famous. Uh, Australia Day protest in, of course, Melbourne with that uh, Tarnine Onus Williams. Uh, I, 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 I wondered if she would become the, the new Yasmin, but she's, <laughs> uh, I think she's uh, probably smartly decided to just shut up for a while saying, Good you know, choice. fuck Australia, I hope it fucking burns to the ground. I mean, that is how, that is what the left has gone to. Yeah, yeah, it's absolute insanity. I mean, I... How, how low must you think of Aboriginal people that changing the date is somehow going to solve all of the problems? Like, it, it's ridiculous. Um, I, I feel like this whole change the date thing is just nothing more than a virtue signal. Like, yeah. remember, remember back when there was all this pressure f um, for Howard to apologize for, um, for the stolen generation and things like that, and how if he would just apologize, then everything would be forgiven and we'd all live happily ever after. Now, Howard refused to do it, and I don't blame him. I, I would have done the exact same thing. Then when Kevin Rudd came in, he did apologize, and you know, we all cheered and held hands and hugged and cried. And fast track a few years later, and it's just the goalpost has just been shifted. They're just whinging about something else. So I think even if we did change the date, something else would happen and people will continue to find a reason to whinge. I'll give you a more concrete uh, example of that. So yeah, the, the apology was supposed to heal everything, but the, now we're supposed to have constitutional uh, recognition. But because the, both the major parties agreed on the, the concept of constitutional recognition, now the, the Indigenous activists have upped the ante and say, oh no, we actually want more now. Now we want an Indigenous uh, voice to, to Parliament. So it's always the case with, as soon as you concede something to the left there, their demand becomes greater. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why I, th I think there are certain times where you just cannot give in because, because they will just continuously shift the goalpost. Mm. And of course, not even uh, Anzac Day is uh, sacrosanct. There is, even the lead up to Anzac Day this year was, uh, the, the, of course, it was also the one year anniversary of when Yasmin sent out a famous Lest We Forget Manus Nauru. Uh, Syria, uh, Palestine. Uh, there was uh, Sally Rugg, the, uh, one of uh, one of the former directors of Get Up, who said, "Oh, maybe we should all uh, uh, mass tweet this uh, on, on Anzac Day." And then there was uh, Catherine D. Uh, I call her Catherine Deviancy, <laughs> Deviancy, uh, of course, saying, "Oh, it's not hard to be in the military. Of oh, it's uh, what did she call it? Bogan Halloween." And there, it's they, uh, even though the vast majority of Australians still commemorated the day, it, the, the, the left, they're, they're after everything now. Yeah, they really are. It never stops with them. And it, it sometimes never ceases to amaze me at the creativity of the left. They, they will find anything to whinge about. Mm. I mean, like, it, it reminds me of the quote from Anita Sarkeesian. 
everything is oh. sexist, everything is racist, and everything is homophobic. I mean, that that sums up the far left in Australia. Uh, uh, one uh, major change that happened uh, since we last spoke was same-sex marriage is now legal in yep. Australia. And of course, we had the Marriage Law Postal Survey, which ran from about August to uh, uh, November, and of course, came back as... Um, uh, 61% uh, yes vote, uh, and which meant the, the legislation passed through the parliament. It didn't include any uh, religious protections. Uh, that, that campaign was uh, uh, another one where the, the, the left, they, they really um, <clears throat> tried to basically bully people into, you know, if you don't support us, you're a bigot. Yeah. Um, I did notice, though, that during that, um, I guess, the lead-up time before the vote, you finally saw conservatives stand up for themselves. And um, I think, like, a lot of Christians will allow themselves to be sort of kicked around a little bit. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, right? I, um, I have no problem with gay marriage whatsoever. Um, but it was really nice to see that people, um, you know, on the Christian and conservative side were standing up for themselves and not... Um, you know, fighting back and not allowing themselves just to be pushed around by the left and say, oh, you're a fucking homophobic. So, yeah, I think that was that was nice to see. And I actually did notice that, um, heaven forbid, that the left did actually uh, learn something during the campaign because there was just so much bad publicity with them, like, harassing no voters yeah. that they actually learnt to, you know, just ignore them <laughs> yeah like let them have their have their speech and i was like wow they actually learned something yeah no i i think it's so important to be able to just disagree on certain things and still be able to get along mm. uh it's yeah i mean uh, it, it's happened now so um but the main thing is is to you know not because the the main message of the no campaign is um well you may not have a problem with you know same sex marriage but there's also the the safe schools the the gender uh, gender fluidity yeah. uh, uh programs that's going to get worse and of course uh it has with uh in in queensland they have the proposal to have uh, gender neutral birth certificates uh it, it's just getting more insane. Yeah, I I don't think the Labor train will last too much longer in Queensland. Um, there are a lot of conservative voters in um in Queensland, and I think they're realizing how ridiculous Labor. You're giving Victoria a run for its money. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been tough with um, Nanastasia as we call it, Nanastasia <laughs> Halache. She's um, she's a how do I put it politely? She's a fucking moron, basically. Um. And I, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't looked at her approval rating, but I don't think she'll make it through the next election. Yeah, well, the the opposition leader in Queensland, uh, Deb Frecklington, she seems uh, quite uh, on the ball on on most issues. But yeah, um, the state's got to survive the next three years with yeah. uh, a, la a Labor government, and it. Uh, I was discussing this on another podcast the other day that the mask is off. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, a change will be good. What uh, hasn't helped the, the Liberal Party is that there's also the the Abbott Turnbull uh, sideshow. Uh, uh, to uh, Tony Abbott, uh, he, he said uh, when he was deposed as Prime Minister, there'd be uh, no sniping, but uh, he's... He, he, uh, if the Turnbull government's not doing... Uh, not being in a... behaving in a conservative way, he'll, he'll make his... Make, and make his voice known. I mean, there's there's energy policy that he's been pretty um, hardcore on. It, it's interesting. I mean, what a time to be alive that Tony Abbott is becoming popular again. I mean, when he was prime minister, he did not have a lot of fans. He was, um, when he got ousted, he was effectively the laughing stock of Australian politics. And I think it says a lot about our current government that, um, that he's gaining a lot of traction. Mm. It's definitely here. Uh, my main criticism of uh, Tony Abbott is that he's saying a lot of good things now, but he didn't do it when he was uh, prime minister. Yeah. And it's sort of, it, it, in a strange way, it, it's 
it seems it's much easier for like conservatives to beat Turnbull up and like drag him to policies such as the the national energy guarantee and the uh, citizenship uh, test. Uh, the Turnbull won't do anything about uh, immigration. No, um, hopefully, hopefully Peter Dutton will have something to say about that though. Uh, well, yeah, Turnbull seems to be still calling the shots on on those issues now. Uh, a lot of people say that, yeah, Liberal Party, they've, they've gone too far left, but I think Bill Shorten and Labour are, are much worse. I mean, yeah. Shorten's proposing uh, so many new taxes, um, or he wants to cancel the, the company tax cuts. Uh, he's got the, uh, the new uh, franking uh, dividend uh, tax increase. And then, of course, there's the trade union uh, movement under the leadership of Sally McManus uh, proposing or launching this new uh, Change the Rules campaign, really uh, try, trying to uh, create a new class warfare. I mean, there's ads on TV saying, oh, I'm, you know, being so screwed over by my work and they're, they're all these corporations are making uh, mega profits. It's uh, la Labour has gone, uh, gone back to, you know, old school uh, like you know us and them yeah and it's it's ridiculous because as much as they play that they're being stuffed over by corporations you're in a first world country you you've got it pretty damn good here i mean out what's the average wage in australia it's like sixty five thousand is the mm. is the mean or something like that i mean everyone's got it pretty damn good i think people are just looking for things to complain about yeah, well, it's because we've we've had it so good for for so long. Yeah. It breeds a sense of entitlement. Yeah, it really does. I mean, people don't remember what it was like in the seventies and eighties, like working class people living paycheck to 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 paycheck. I mean, even the the, the poorest people in Australia can still afford like a, a flashy phone, uh, have, have uh, you know flat screen TVs. Uh, I mean, and, and you know, you can afford uh, luxuries mm. uh, at the at at the supermarket. I mean, it's much better to be uh, classified. Well, what is poor? I mean, they yeah. they keep uh, moving the the definition of you know what is you know poor or living in, in in poverty. I mean, it's 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 much better to be poor in Australia than well even rich in Venezuela. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in this country, it is very hard to be homeless. Mm. I mean, with the amount of support networks that the government has, which I'm not entirely against. I think it's really important we do have some of these protections in place. But yeah, it's very, very difficult to be really, really poor. Like I was saying just before, it's the, the reason why there is this lurch back to you know, socialism, spread the wealth is yeah, it's because of entitlement because yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, basically um the reason why for example like eastern europe they're, they're now like some of the most free market nations in the world because they know what uh, communism like centralized planning uh redistribution does to uh, a country and we think oh well we're rich enough now we can just simply you know share the pie around and there'll be no adverse consequences it, it's amazing that um all of the people that want socialism, I don't think they really understand it. Like, I've read Das Capital by Karl Marx and the Communist Manifesto, and when you hear people say, oh, communism and socialism works in theory, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. The only, the only way it will work is by holding a gun to someone's head and saying, you're going to give us your, um, your resources, otherwise we're going to have you executed. And that's exactly what happens. Well, the left, they just celebrated Karl Marx's uh, 200th birthday. And despite uh, his ideas having uh, 75 years to fester and yeah. cause uh, famine and uh, terror, uh, there's still people who want to <laughs> give it one more try. Yeah, but real socialism's never been tried, don't you know? Well, real capitalism <laughs> hasn't either, but I, I do like the, the, the closest... We've, we've got to, to real capitalism. That seems yeah. much better than the try at socialism. Yeah, it's like, where would you rather live, North Korea or South Korea? Well, it would be interesting to see what happens over the next sort of 20, 30 years. Because if their economy um, starts booming, it's just another example of um, capitalism working. Yeah, I bet there's always some excuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, given that uh, you're broadly... Uh, 
or what I define as an anti-SJW uh, YouTuber, I thought uh, we'd do a bit of an update on uh, what's going on with them. Uh, obviously, feminism is one of the issues that you did a lot of videos yeah. on. Uh, where is the, the feminist movement at, do you think, now? The feminist movement has gone quiet. So bedroom feminists basically no longer exist on, um, on YouTube. And not that I think that's necessarily a terrible thing. The, um, that sort of ship has sailed where, you know, these feminists would be making videos. Um, I would do responses to them, destroying their arguments. So it, it's not as popular anymore. Um, but they still exist. They just sort of exist a bit more quietly until you see them pop out in, you know, protests like at Milo and things like that. There was a um, time last year where I went to a politics in the pub event in Brisbane and the topic was feminism. And it was as ridiculous as you would imagine it. I mean, there was one girl there that was equating mining for resources um, to be the same thing as perpetuating rape culture of the earth. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So they still exist, but, um, they're not as open about it anymore. Oh, uh, my favorite is that, uh, climate change will adversely affect, uh, women more. Oh, and of course so it, will. <laughs> I, it, it was during when Tony Abbott was prime minister. So saying that his climate policy was misogynistic. Yeah. And, and there's still these ridiculous articles that pop up, like, um, women there's 11 percent of prison populations is women and that's 11 percent too high like, you don't you don't want equality you don't want equality you just want special perks well probably what's taken the the feminist place is the the gender benders that uh, you know, gender is a social con construct gender fluidity non-binary of course uh, this was encapsulated by uh justin trudeau uh uh, interrupting a, a woman who used the term mankind, saying we, we should use the word uh, people kind. Uh, most recently, we saw the the, the Boy Scouts. Uh, they're not they're not called the Boy Scouts anymore. They're called Scouts uh, BSA. Uh, so they've gone uh, gender neutral. Even the the Country Women's Association, they're fighting for uh, gender uh, neut neutrality as well. Yeah, I mean, how good do we have it that these are the things people are whinging about? absolutely insanity i mean look if you if you want to put on a dress and you want me to call you sally that's fine i'll do that but don't expect the rest of the world to change around for your weird quirk oh it's not so much uh, trans people that i have a i have an issue with it's the the, the non-binaries you know uh, z, z oh yeah yeah that's sort of that's sort of what i mean yeah. right there's there's nothing wrong with being trans um but Try, trying to have me call you they mm. and all these weird pronouns it, it's just insanity uh, and and the fact that we have to ba basically because of these people like redo all the toilets to be gender neutral yeah. now i mean i've did an article a while back that uh, even in the, the Dandenong area in Melbourne, which voted no in same-sex marriage, a Labor councillor wanted all new uh, council buildings to have gender-neutral toilets. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, why would we change change the way we do things for the sake of a like a percentage point of the population? Mm. It's ridiculous. Uh, and of course, that's uh, what we we're mentioning before. That's what's in the Safe Schools program as well. I mean, yeah. uh, you would have seen the, the gender-bred person uh, that yeah. uh, there's or there's sexual attraction, there's gender expression, there's gender identity, there's biological uh, gender. It's... I mean, can't you just let kids be kids? I mean, is it really that bad? I mean, <clears throat> the other thing is a lot of people say that um, you know, saying that this is cultural Marxism is a is a conspiracy theory, but Ros Ward, who is the architect of this program is openly admitting to being a communist and, and trying to, um, you know, put these communist values into kids. It, it's not a conspiracy theory. This is words that have come out of her mouth. It's insane. Oh, at least she's got a, uh, just as a, she's left Latrobe now and yeah. she's pretty much a, a full-time Marxist advocate now. Yeah, she's, she's insane. 
And of course, the the other uh, issue that's come up recently is uh, cultural appropriation. There was that uh, American girl who uh, wore the uh, chi a Chinese dress Chinese, to prom, yeah. and uh, f uh, what's the line they say? Uh, my, uh, f uh, my culture is not your prom dress. Yeah, but but the, I don't think the Chinese had a problem with it. No, but uh, <laughs> if one person is offended, it's too many. Yeah, yeah. And it, and this is what I said before, right? It's it's all about them just finding things to be pissed off about. And it's... I mean, cultural appropriation is ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. I, I it, it amazes me that we've allowed things to get this far. Uh, but of course, uh, oh, well, Justin Trudeau, he was criticised for it recently mm. on his trip to India, decided to go everywhere in traditional Indian attire, which the Indians don't even wear anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's become <laughs> West, West, westernised. And... <laughs> yeah, he, he made himself just look like a fool. Because uh, um, uh, there was a YouTuber who was in China who uh, did a like interviewed Chinese people. It's like, what do you think? I was like, oh yeah, I like that they're wearing yeah. that culture. And there was another similar video about um, interviewing Japanese people about a white person wearing like Japanese attire, and they was like, oh yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's funny. It's only your upper class female lefties who are whinging about it. You'd, yeah. ne you'd never hear any of this whinging about cultural appropriation from anyone with a different culture. Mm. Uh, probably another uh, issue which has come into the forefront is the, the death of mainstream comedy, uh, <laughs> where we, uh, the ABC in Australia decided to launch a, a new uh, comedy channel with its flagship program uh, Tonightly, which uh, thinks it's funny to uh, call conservatives uh, cunts. Yeah. It I don't know why the ABC think that's comedy. It's like they've, it's almost as if there is no one in the ABC who's ever faced any criticism and they live inside this sort of echo chamber of a bubble shielded from everyone else. They all pat each other on the backs whenever they make some ridiculous video that they consider comedy. Mm. And, and then when anyone says, hey guys, this is, um, you know, this is not funny, right? They're like, ah, oh, alt-right trolls. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let's have a look at uh, one of who they're promoting as the, the next generation of uh, comedy, uh, Demi Lardner. A bad idea! <laughs> bad ideas! Bad ideas! Let's all have some bad ideas! Denim condom. <laughs> it's, bad, it's bad. Bad ideas! Bad ideas! Let's have a few more bad ideas, Uber! but instead of ride sharing they just kick you in the throat now that is just bizarre i <laughs> i mean I, the the dance just makes it look rid ridiculous i mean if she delivered it properly maybe some of it would be funny yeah but it's just i mean i could come up with you know a bad idea and like would that automatically mean people would laugh at it yeah i i can't help but to wonder if they're putting in canned laughter over this stuff because if you look at the comments on these videos on facebook it is overwhelmingly just criticism yeah uh, I, I, I say it shared in all the, the anti-SJW groups and uh, people actually go pay money to, to see her and she's won comedy awards. Yeah, I know. It, it, it blows my mind. But um, I suspect her audience is that without a sense of humour. <laughs> or they find uh, all other humour offensive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, so that we're just not picking on a female comedian, let's have a look at this guy. Let's have some fun! I like feeling good, yeah, I like feeling nice. Choosing between good and bad, don't need to think twice. Happiness, yeah, baby, give me some of that. I've got the key to the cream room, and buddy, I'm a cat now. Now, that might be funny to a group of children, but to adults, I mean, acting like a cat, how is, like, you just look silly. Yeah, he, I mean, I'm no comedian, right? But just making up a song and acting like an idiot isn't, isn't comedy. I mean, I miss the, 
like George Carlin days, you know, your, your Dave Chappelle, these guys who are just geniuses at coming up with these routines. And compared to this, it's, it's ridiculous. It's on a whole new, different level of retarded. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it's not just uh, uh, Australia and the United States as well. Mm. The, the, the late night uh, comedians, they're, they're all of the left. And yeah. it seems that they've stopped being funny and they're just preaching now. Mm. Like John Oliver, for example, I, it's basically a, a left wing journalism program, but because he like journalism. swears and, um, you know, uh, f makes like snide, snide comments, it's, it's then considered comedy. Yeah, he, I, he is so insufferable I, he's just so smug and um i mean look it, i'm sure it's got appeal uh, there are some john oliver things that that aren't terrible i think he obviously puts in a lot of work um <laughs> but but you're right it really is just you know preaching it's not changing anyone's minds all it's doing is just um you know sort of patting yourself on the back for for your audience members, really. And of course, it culminated with uh, Michelle Wolf, who uh, rose to fame as a correspondent on The Daily Show, which has gone way downhill since Trevor Noah became the, the host, yeah. uh, giving the, the roast at the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner, where it was just, uh, she, was, she was just being nasty. Like, it wasn't, yeah. like, ro 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 roasting is, is just basically, I, I saw the, the, the Comedy Central roast of Ann Coulter, and it seems that, you know, roasting, it's just, it, it's just now an excuse to, like, be a cunt to a person. Yeah, it really is. And, and there's nothing super witty about it either. I mean... Yeah, sure, there's a couple savage burns, but, I mean, at the end of the day, what are you achieving by it? Absolutely nothing. Well, mainstream media, uh, they, they haven't uh, learnt much over... No, they have not. <laughs> I mean, it's there's... Obviously, in Australia, we have News Corp, and uh, even uh, Channel 7, it gets labelled now uh, Fash News, uh, because... <laughs> oh, really? Uh, be, uh, because that... <laughs> Oh, it's, oh, heaven forbid it uh, uh, put the True Blue crew and Blair Quattrill in a positive light. So there mm. is there is some mainstream media which is tweaking. I mean, Sunrise, I mean, oh, is uh, has it has its good moments, um, but uh, overall, especially ABC, Fairfax, and then there's the left wing websites, The Guardian, uh, Junkie, Ooh. BuzzFeed. Yeah, I, it amazes me that they're so popular, but they really do just appeal to the lowest common denominator. I mean, especially BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed is cancer. I think a Junkie is, is worse. I'm not sure how... I haven't followed it much. Oh, that is that is worse. It, I, it's Worse than BuzzFeed? Yeah, it, oh, yeah, it is. Jesus, that's rough. Uh, they're basically, all their headlines are just saying, oh, watch how stupid these conservatives are, or watch yeah. you know, this conservative commentator... Oh, complain about something like it's just really like snide stuff yeah but it's good for research and like finding <laughs> out what, what retarded stuff yeah. the left is saying but yeah it makes what we do even more important the fact that because even there's things that news corp and uh, channel 7 won't cover yep well, I'd like to thank you for being the inaugural guest in the in the new studio. It's good to to meet you in person. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep, uh, keep in contact, and um, yeah, obviously, hope Melbourne is nice <laughs> to you on a whole. Yeah. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. I would like to encourage all of you to subscribe to 8Bit's YouTube channel, and you can also check out our previous chat with him in the uh, Waves archive. There are some big upcoming events in Melbourne, which I'd like to encourage all of you to attend. The first is the No Snowflakes Pub Night, hosted by Avi Yemeni and Sydney Watson. It is on Friday the 1st of June at 7pm, and will be held in the South Yarra area. Tickets are free and can be booked via Eventbrite. The True Blue Cruise annual Aussie Pride Flag March is nearly upon us. It was one of the first events we covered out in the field in Melbourne last year, and we'll be back again there this year. The date is Sunday the 24th of June at 12pm and begins at the Royal Exhibition Building. The Campaign Against Racism and Fascism will be there to counter-protest, so we'll also witness the feral left in action. 
Also, don't forget if you want to take The Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash The Unshackled. Also, don't forget we have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.